From the welcome screen, I'll click the Next button to begin setting up the study. When I do, Simulation Express shows the first step in the process, setting up fixtures. Also notice a new simulation study tree appears on the left. Once you're familiar with the tree here in Simulation Express, you'll find it behaves almost identical to the interface in the full version of SOLIDWORKS Simulation. Right now, there are only four items in the tree. At the top, you see the name of the study, followed by the name of the part. The third item represents any fixtures, which I'll add in just a moment. And the fourth item represents the loads, that I'll also apply later on. The first step in the wizard is to apply fixtures to the part. The term fixture simply means how the part is held in place or restrained. Since Simulation Express is an entry-level tool with a focus on simplicity, you are somewhat limited on the types of fixtures you can place on the part. While the full version of Simulation supports quite a few additional fixtures, Simulation Express only supports the fixed geometry fixture, which prevents motion in all directions for the face selected. Equally importantly, it makes the face selected perfectly rigid, meaning that the face can never change from its initial shape or position. Contrast this with a fixture your hand may provide. While it might be reasonable to assume that the portion being held doesn't move through space, the part can easily deform within your grip. This is an important aspect of a fixed geometry restraint. In the full versions of simulation, there are a variety of techniques that allow you to more realistically specify how a part is supported, with or without restraints. While most fixtures do make the selected face rigid, some specialized methods allow faces to slide or rotate, as a box may slide on a floor, or a link may spin about a pivot. Another inherent aspect of fixed geometry fixtures is that, when using them, you are telling Simulation Express how the face will, or more specifically, won't, deform. In most cases, you don't know, and can't know, how it will deform until you've tested it. The full version of SOLIDWORKS Simulation allows you to simply model the parts that support each other and let them deform naturally without any interference from you. The Fixed Geometry Fixture Type in Simulation Express can still give you an idea of the deformation and where the high stress areas on your design are. Notice in the task pane, there are a few links that show a preview of how the fixed restraint behaves in certain scenarios. Keep in mind, that if you aren't very confident that the part or parts you would attach, as represented by this fixed restraint, will not move or deform as you test the part under load, you should consider exploring the test using the more complete version of SOLIDWORKS simulation. When I'm ready to add the fixture, I can do so by either clicking Add a Fixture in the task pane, or by right-clicking the Fixtures icon in the simulation tree, and selecting Fixed Geometry. Both methods will bring up the Fixture Property Manager. All you have to do here is select the face or faces you want to restrain. For this example, I'll select the cylindrical face of the large hole. The symbols that appear tell you that the fixture is restraining the face in all directions. I'll click the green check, and you can see the fixture listed in the study tree. If there were other areas on this part that should be restrained, I could have selected them at the same time as the cylindrical face, or alternatively, I could add them as separate fixture sets by clicking the Add Fixture button again. All sets are applied at the same time, but you can use them to differentiate multiple areas of support that might be used in a given test. Keep in mind, the options such as adding a fixture or editing an existing feature can all be accessed by right-clicking in the study tree. I can add additional fixtures by right-clicking the fixtures item in the tree, and I can edit the existing feature by right-clicking on it and selecting Edit Definition. At this point, I can move on to the next step in the wizard, using the buttons on the bottom of the wizard to navigate. You can always use the Back button to revisit previous steps, or press Start Over if you ever want to start from scratch. I'll click Next to move on and add a load.